So she was, she was, she was concerned. So when she married Richard and Ian, she married him because of his power and his, and, but specifically she wanted Rockfleet Castle, which was on the south of, didn't I take you there too? No? It's, it's a typical sort of square, five or six story high castle. I love it, I go there a lot. Whenever I go to Ireland, <clears throat> I always go down to Rockfleet. You can walk in there and climb to the top of the stairs and hold uh, uh, Granny Wales' uh, room at the top and, you know, you can really kind of sit there for hours and imagine what it must have been like. Um, and it's in very good repair and it's, it's right on the little bay so they would bring in their ships and they would beach them because these would not have keels, they'd be shallow. So they would like wade ashore and just beach them, you know. So, and it was very, very protected. It's a perfect little, uh, little harbor. Um, but she wanted that. She understood the value of that because, well, she could get reinforcements from, from, the, uh, from the land. It had a lot more going for it than her um, castle out on Clare Island. And um, what she did was, she tricked him, really. She, she married under the Brehan Law, under Brehan Law. In those days, Brehan Law was still running alongside uh, English law. And under Brehan Law, the old Gaelic law, you married for a year, and if it worked out after a year, you stayed married. <laughs> but you, you, you basically said that, well, I won't marry anybody else for a year. You didn't exactly give a whole lot away. And women had enormous rights. They had incredible rights under the old Brahan law. They were absolutely equal with men as far as um, uh, property and uh, marriage rights and divorce. You just say, I divorce you, bye. Um, so she agreed to marry him under um, Brahan law. And Brahan law had some of the advantages of uh, that uh, they made deals about property. So anyway, uh, he must have given, he must have signed some kind of a quick claim deed or he did something anyway that gave her the, the castle. And she immediately locked him out and she didn't never let him back in. And the, the, uh, after the year was up, she told him, you know, go away, we're not married anymore. And she kept the castle. But um, <clears throat> I just I just like that part. Um, Where is that castle? It's if you can picture. Who asked me that? There you go. Um, it's between. It's it's off the road between Newport and Ackle Sound, Ackle Island. If you, if you've driven that road, mm -hmm. as you go uh, on the east <coughs> side of Clue Bay, you have Westport. And Newport at the top, and then you then you can drive along the the north side of of Clare Island, and that's the way out to Ackill Island. And very uh, only a short two or three miles outside Newport. I don't know even know if there's a sign. Uh, there might be a little sign to the left, and uh, maybe pointing the other way into the field. You know, yeah. you know how that works. Um, down to Rockfleet, but make sure you go in there. It's just outside Newport on the on the Ackle Road, and um, <clears throat> as I said, it's it's it was never. See, if they weren't shelled or bombed or destroyed, they're still there because you couldn't burn them out because you know anything that's wood is gone. So the stairs are there, but there's no protection. You know, you see, you walk up the stairs, and you can see where the different floors would be, and then the top floor is still is. Um, made of um, stone, and <clears throat> there's a beautiful, build, beautiful room, about probably twice the size of this, this size here, and and again at least, one big room and a huge fireplace and windows, looking 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 out, and a, a, a sort of a, they had a. Um, a pulley, there's a, a thing sticking out and obviously they had, so everything was winched up. All, all of the um, food and all the rest of it would have been winched up uh, into the room. And everything would have been, the, the entire walls would have been covered in tapestries. Um, I, I suppose, ta tapestries. But they would be covered in um, 
in the old days, and even probably in Croydon's place, in animal hides. And the reason is, if you, if you, I had my sister do this, by the way, because she had a damp house, they had an old farmhouse, and it's a big old farmhouse, and I told her to do this in one of the rooms, and it works. The, if you've got a, you get these stone walls that are that thick, you know, and, but they're damp on the inside. Well, the reason they're damp is because the stone is cold, you put a fire down, and you got a nice cozy going, and you get condensation like crazy. You know, because what have you got? You've got warm, moist air hitting a cold surface, and boom, you've got condensation right away. So, but if you hang uh, fabrics, <coughs> any kind of natural fibers, like clothes or sheep or that, doesn't happen. Because now the cold air uh, doesn't, or the warm air doesn't hit the, the, uh, the, the stone at the back, and especially if it's just, you know, you leave it, you hang it so that there's some air in between there, and you get no condensation. And, um, and it's as warm as toast. So that all of these, people make the mistake of thinking that these old castles were horrifically cold old barns. Yes, they are under today's technology, but not the way they did it. So of course, um, if you were wealthy, you would uh, put up decorative stuff. Otherwise, you just put up whatever you got. You didn't care what it looked like. But especially a woman would like woven things and patterns and so on. So these places probably looked awfully nice because they would have had say, maybe rough and tumble um, cow hides or animal hides or whatever at the back and then tapestries at the front. And that together with, and of course, they would have straw and various things on the, the reason they did straw was because instead of, vacuum the floor, they just sweep and throw it out. <laughs> so I would, I would go and put in some new so that they would get uh, they would get new straw. And they didn't have to worry too much about throwing bones and crumbs and stuff, you know, they just tossed it out. Um, so uh, you can sit there and you can kind of visualize what it would have been like. And it must have been very, very nice. Whoops, anybody fallen down yet? No? Is that your is that the Englishman's chair again? Anyway, um, then she was back in her old. Um, yeah, she, she was back at her old trade now uh, from Rockfield Fleet, and she was um, um, trading again and running all over the known world and making a lot of money. She was an extremely good businesswoman. She could make money like you wouldn't believe. So she accumulated, because uh, she paid these men, you know, and they all were, and she had the best, the best men in the, in the, in the world because she paid top wages. If she didn't like you, she got rid of you. So she'd, she would have, have the best soldiers, she'd have the best seamen, uh, she'd have the best of everything because she was very shrewd with money and she made some very, very good deals. Um, her son, uh, Tibbet Nalong, uh, Tibbet really uh, in English is Theobald, but it's actually an old Irish name, Tibbet. Tibbet. Um, and Tibbet Nalong, uh, the Irish word for a ship or a, a boat is Long. So Tibbet of the Long um, became a very famous man in, in Irish history later on. He, he's very important. And he became the first Viscount Mayo, and uh, was the alternate, if you like, to the to the um, the Bingham reign. They later became, in the next century, they became landowners and Protestants, um, and uh, they are today the family uh, own and operate Westport House, which is one of the best preserved. Um, old Irish families uh, in, um, uh, in Ireland. <clears throat> so if you ever go to that part of the world and you go into Westport House, um, uh, think of Tibbet and Lung, uh, Grace O'Malley's, Grainne Wales' um, son. 
And he was called Tibbly Lung because he was born on a ship. <laughs> she, she, that might have held her back maybe a day, day and a half max, <laughs> having a baby on the ship. That's how a tough woman this was. Uh, she, um, that didn't, that didn't, uh, that, didn't bug her, that didn't bother her at all. And um, what was interesting about that particular trip was they had a very nasty encounter with Barbara Pilots, Pirates, literally while she was having the baby. I mean, literally. And uh, they, they, she was maybe hours after having the baby, and she was, you know, obviously not feeling 100%. But the battle was raging overhead, and her men were getting the worst of it. <laughs> she got out of bed, went up, and she just changed the whole damn thing. <laughs>